Hey, Larry here again. In my last video, I talked about unboxing the InstiConnect 4G12 cellular data modem. And today, we are going to hook it up and test it out and see how it works. So, I have my directions right here that you can get off the website if you don't have them. And it says, uh, Step one is you, you start with the router, which is this device, and it has the, the four antenna ports on the back. And the first thing you do is attach the 2.4 and the 5.0 antennas. So if you look on each antenna, it will say, this one says 5G right there, little 5G print. And on here, each of these is labeled either 2.4 or 5. So you got to make sure that the proper antenna gets put onto the proper port. So this one's a 5G, so I'm going to put it into the first 5G port. And all you do is just finger tight. You don't have to crank it down real tight. Just snug. And then the antenna flips up like so. The next one is a 2.4G. I'm going to put that into the first 2.4G port. The next is the next 5G, so that's going to go there. And finally, the last 2.4G antenna is going to go into this last 2.4G port. And then once you get them on, you can straighten them up so they look nice. And that's it. The antennas are on. The next step is connect power to the router so I'm going to be using the wall adapter and it comes with a wall adapter and it comes with a straight 12 volt connection so we're using the wall adapter and in the box is this jumper that goes from the end of the wall adapter into the router so we just plug that into that little receptacle there and then the other end is a square connector and that plugs in over here on this end. There's a little clip on it. You get the clip on top and you push that in until it clicks. Now it's on. And we have one, we have a power light come on. And in the directions it says you will get a power, LR, and HS lights. It says wait until all three lights come on. So we got the power light right next to that is going to be the LS and next to that's going to be HS. LS refers to, uh, or I'm sorry, it's LR. The LR light refers to long range Wi-Fi, which is the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band. The HS refers to high speed, which is the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band. Now we see that we have both lights on. The uh, LR is blinking and the HS is steady. Moving on, the next step is use your computer or mobile device to connect to the InstiConnect setup Wi-Fi network. So we need to get the, the laptop out and I'll show you how you go about logging onto that. All right, we got the computer set up. And the first thing we need to do is connect to the InstiConnects setup Wi-Fi. So we go down here, I'm running Windows 10. I click on that and it shows me all available Wi-Fi networks. If you don't have that little icon, just go to settings and Wi-Fi. So right at the top is InstiConnect setup. We click that, we click connect automatically, and then hit connect. It tells me it's connecting. Okay, now it's connected. It says no internet open. That's good. That's what we want to see. So then we go up here to the address bar of the browser and we type in my.insti and hit enter. And that brings us to the opening page. And then a banner pops up and it says, welcome to InstiConnect. Click here to run the setup wizard. So we click on that link right there.
and now it says create your Insti Connect router password. And this is the password for the router itself. If you need to make any changes to it, its settings, this is the password you would use for that. I'm just going to use something simple, easy to remember. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I would suggest you not use that password. Six, seven, eight. And then you go way over here to this blue button and click save. Now it comes up with the rest of the Wi-Fi setup wizard. We need to set passwords for the 2.4 gigahertz long range Wi-Fi and the five gigahertz high speed Wi-Fi. You can change the name of them if you want, or you can just go with what the default is. And I'm gonna set the password to the same as what I used before for both of them. Okay, and then way over here again, we click the blue save button. Now it says configuration has been applied. Probably can't read it, but it does say that. And what it's gonna do is bring back up the main page. And now it's telling us, please connect the modem module to the router. So that's going to be our next step. All right, and here's our modem module. It's the, the black device with two antenna connections and a USB connection on the end of it. And then here are the two SIM slots. And if you look real close, there's a Roman numeral, Roman numeral one and a Roman numeral two. And if you have two SIMs with two separate carriers that you would put them in one and two respectively. I only have one. I have my visible unlimited internet SIM right here. And if you look real close on, on this little diagram on the side, on the depiction of the SIM card, it shows a little cut corner on the bottom left. And if you look on the SIM card itself, you'll see a cut corner. Oh, come on, if it wants to focus, there it goes. Uh, there's a cut corner on the bottom left, and that is exactly how the SIM card needs to be placed inside the modem. And you'll see, if you look in the slot here, there's like a kind of a white line. That's the side of the PC board. Your SIM card goes in right behind that. All right, here we see the SIM card slid part way in to the SIM card slot. And to get it to go down in, you have to use your fingernail. See there, it's only partially in. And to get it to go all the way in, you have to push it down until it clicks. And it, it's spring-loaded, and you'll hear the click. And then that, that means the card is... Okay, and it just clicked. I don't know if we heard it or not, but it's in there. Now, if it, if it didn't click properly, the SIM card itself would have come out just a little bit. And to remove the SIM card, you just push down on it again and it springs up and then you can grab a hold of it and slide it out. So we're gonna push it back in. We want it right just like that. There's SIM card one in the slot. Okay, now that the SIM card is in the modem, we're gonna install the modem into the angel wing antenna and on the front of it the modem goes inside this box right here and all you do is just you slide it in part way until it, some of this is still sticking out because what we have to do is hook up the antenna wires and that's these two wires coming out of either side and they just you start them on there and then just twist them on finger tight 
don't make them too tight just snug so now we've got both antennas hooked up just like so and now we can um, now we need our USB data cable this came with the kit it's a 15 foot cable there's two ends one has the silver USB connector here and then the other side is encased all in rubber it's the encased side that goes up here on the modem so you all you do is you insert that over over the USB connector that's on the modem itself now we can slide the modem all the way up in to the angel wing then we need our angel feet the clip and there's three slots in the in the angel feet and the antenna wires go through either side and then the USB wire goes through the center so you just kind of get your get your wires lined up into the right slot and then slide the angel feet clip up into the same channel where the modem went and then push it until it clicks and you may have to squeeze, there's, there's tabs on either side, squeeze those shut a little so that it goes up in there more. And then uh, continue pushing it until you hear it click. And now it's in. And it's in there solid, it's not going to come back out. Now I, I also got the optional roof mount, which is uh, kind of a stand for the the angel wing antennas and there are there's two screws on either side of that and there are um, corresponding slots on the back of here for it to go into if you don't have this I you would use a, a looks like a one inch one and a half inch maybe pipe going in, in here and you would secure that using zip ties or whatever it is but I, I've got this so I'm gonna slap that on there and you just you get the two screws started into their holes and then slide it into place. So now the angel wing antennas are set up and ready to go. All right, our next step is to plug in the data cable coming from the angel wing antenna into the front of the router. And this, this is the other end of the USB data cable and it plugs in right here on this end of the, the blue fa face plate. And that's it, it's plugged in. Okay, I just plugged the modem into the router and up here it tells me it is starting connection that means it's initiating the connection between the router and the modem. And now it says new SIM card found. Click here to set up the new provider profile. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to click there. And it tells you set up new sim and the last couple of times I've done this it says this connect this section contains no values and what I have to do is go up here and hit the reload page and I'm guessing because I've done this a couple times so it's it gets stuck on that so I, if you're doing it for the first time I don't think you'll see that issue but if you do just hit refresh now it wants us to give the SIM card a new name, which is, we're on Visible, so I'm going to call it Visible. And then down here, it says uh, it automatically selected Verizon because Visible is on the Verizon network. But if you hit the down arrow, you'll get an actual selection for Visible. And then you go way over here again to the blue save button. And you click that 
It says configuration has been applied. Now it says rebooting the modem. And this may take a few minutes. So we'll be right back. Okay, I just finished rebooting and it repopulated the screen and this is what comes up. It shows me that I have a connection on the visible SIM card. I have 100% signal strength. Now, what I've done, I'm not sure it made a huge difference or not, but I, I've read and seen on the internet that it does. If you go here, if you're using the visible network anyway, you go to current LTE SIM profile. And this is the screen where we gave it a name. And if you go to the advanced tab right there, the first option is custom TTL value. And I set that to 64. And then scroll down a little bit and go all the way over here again to the blue save button and save it. And now it's going to reload again. And it says it's rebooting the modem. Please wait. Loading. And it may take a few minutes. So we'll be right back. Okay, now we're back. It really only takes about two minutes or so for it to reboot and come back onto here. Alright, the next step is going to be to get rid of the setup Wi-Fi. And to do that, we need to first connect to one of the either the 2.4 or the 5 gig networks. So I come back over to my Wi-Fi and I'm gonna disconnect from the InstiConnect setup channel and I'm gonna connect to the InstiConnect HS. And I'm gonna hit connect automatically and hit connect, checking network requirements and now it says connected secured and since I've connected to that before it already had the password memorized but the first time you do it it's going to ask you for the password which I set it to one two three four five six seven eight you would set it to something a little more secure than that I hope all right now we're on we're off of the setup Wi-Fi and what you do is you scroll down to the end of these blue bars and you have a button that says finish wizard and remove open Wi-Fi network so we click that and it tells us uh, there's a button that we click again to finish the uh, run the, the finish wizard and remove the open network so it says we suggest disconnecting from the setup Wi-Fi, which we already did. So we just click that and it says processing. And now it's loading. And that's it. Open Wi-Fi setup network has been removed. And then there's our, our visible signal strength and whatnot. Uh, it's, it's synchronizing. It's finding the best channel to use it shows two of them because there's two antennas and it tries to get on two separate channels to get you the best speed and I've noticed like it, it takes it a few seconds to go back and forth a little bit and eventually you'll get a green check and that means you're good to go and then down here if you scroll down to the bottom there's this great big blue go circle so we click the big blue go button and it's going to run a speed test just to see how good of a connection we have. And we got up to 20 megabits per second download and the upload speed is quite a bit higher and I've noticed on on this the built-in speed test it starts out low and it, and it ends up high for some reason so we started out really slow and we ended up at 20.6 megabits download now if I go to 
directly to speedtest.net on another tab, it works much better. If I go to speedtest.net, then I could choose a server that is that is more appropriate for me because I am in West Southwest Texas in El Paso and using a, a Kansas based server doesn't seem to work so well so if I just type in the search El Paso it gives me a couple options I choose one of those servers and I hit go let's see what we get See, look at that. Wow, that's over, that's over 60, over 70 megs per second. 74.75 megabits per second download. That, that's the difference in the server. So using, using that built-in speed test Sometimes I get a good result from it, sometimes I don't. But when I come straight to the speedtest.net website and do it directly, I end up with a much better result. So almost 75 megabits download. That is pretty good. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you for joining me. My next video is going to be installing the angel wing antenna up on the roof of my RV, uh, routing the data cable down inside the RV, and finding a good place to install the router and get all of its connections hooked up. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss the next one, please hit subscribe and click the little bell so you'll be notified and I'll see you next time. Bye.